strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. This week, changes were made to the LDS Temple Endowment Ceremony again. The LDS Temple Ceremony has changed several times, which is interesting because when I was growing up in the church, I heard phrases like, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever a lot. We heard things like doctrine never changes and God never changes. In fact, there are many, many, many times where the church itself has put out literature or a prophet has said that the church never changes. The Prophet Joseph Smith History of the Church, Volume 4. He set the temple ordinances to be the same forever and ever, and set Adam to watch over them to reveal them from heaven to man. Temple ordinances to be the same forever and ever. Clearly that hasn't happened. If you guys are familiar with church history, you know that pre-1990 there were temple ordinances where you had to swear to slit your own throat and open your bowels if you were to reveal the secrets that you would have learned in the temple. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to learn more about it. If you've seen the show Under the Banner of Heaven, they talk more about that. Um, that was something I personally never experienced because I obviously wasn't even born when they changed that, but that was a major change. It's interesting that they say these things never change when clearly they do. <laughs> Another one, The Prophet's Message, Church News, June 5th, 1965. The gospel cannot possibly be changed. The saving principles must ever be the same. They can never change. The gospel must always be the same in all of its parts. No one can change the gospel. Something that I've seen a lot of Mormons say in response to criticisms such as these and when these things are brought up is like, well, the, the, the temple ceremony itself didn't change, the execution of the ceremony changed. I, I do find it very interesting. I feel like this is one of those things that if you're being completely objective, you can see that yes, the temple ceremony, the things that happen in the temple ceremony, the way it happens has changed a lot over the years. And you know, as a member of the church, you can come up with whatever explanation you like to make that make sense. But the reality is, the ceremony changes every so often. This time I would say that most of the changes are not particularly significant, but there are a couple that really surprised me and that I think are good changes. So I want to go over those today and if you're the type of person like me who has an interest in the LDS church either because you were a member or because you have family members who are, if you're the type of person who is interested in the way the church changes, depending on what criticisms it receives, I think you'll like this. Proxy ordinances no longer include the phrase who is dead after the person's name. So this basically is any proxy ordinance could be baptisms for the dead, confirmation for the dead, the endowment ceremony. Like if you were to be baptized for John Smith, they would say for and in behalf of John Smith who is dead. So apparently they've taken out the who is dead portion. Not sure why, maybe somebody can enlighten me in the comments as to why they thought that needed to change. Maybe it just sounded too creepy, I guess. <laughs> more artwork shown during the endowment slideshow features Jesus. Jesus is mentioned more frequently throughout the ceremony. That is very in line with what the church has been doing lately to distance itself more from Joseph Smith and the word Mormon and try to bring more focus onto Jesus. We're not Mormons, we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints because they want to include Jesus. The logo changing to something that has Jesus on it, I feel like they have definitely been trying to place a lot more emphasis on Jesus to convince the rest of the world that they are Christians. And again, I have certain feelings about that. I'm the type of person who feels like if somebody says that they are a Christian and they believe in Christ, we should just let them have that. That's my personal opinion. The five major sets of covenants that patrons are required to accept are presented at the beginning of the endowment, presumably to allow people to know what they are getting into before being offered the chance to withdraw from the ceremony. This one to me is the number one most important one, and I think it is an excellent change. And I think they are changing it because of criticism they have received from either, you know, more progressive Mormons or from ex-Mormons. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I did this video where I talked about how frustrating it was going through the temple and there was a point when I went through where they would tell you, if you don't want to proceed, you can leave. But that was before they told you what was going to happen. It was before they told you the covenants you were going to make. And I always felt like 
that was unfair. I truly believe that the church has changed this because of criticism they have received about how this is not informed consent. Sure, they gave you the option to leave in the past, but they gave you that option before you knew what was going to happen, before you knew the promises you were about to make. I think it is an excellent change that they are now telling you what's going to happen, telling you the promises you are going to make and saying, if you don't want to do this, you can leave. I think that's great. I do wish they would be um, more open about it. I wish they would be more open before you even get there because once you get to the temple, you've you know purchased temple clothes, you've purchased garments, you usually you invite your family to come with you like it's a big deal my family members traveled to be there for this moment so i think it would be good to know before you even get to the temple you know maybe during a temple prep class or something exactly what's going to happen what you're going to look like what clothes we're going to wear what's going to happen as a very common knowledge thing so that once you get there you already know um, you already understand these things because if you don't know those things and you get to the temple and you are in a position where you have a lot of peer pressure because you've got your family members with you if you were to leave it would mess everything up because most people who are going to the temple for the first time they're either preparing to go on a mission you have to go through the temple first and do your endowments or you're going through because you're getting married another big thing if you don't go through before you're married you can't get married in the temple so for example when i went through Obviously, I didn't have this informed consent because they've changed it just barely. But even if I had wanted to change my mind at that point, I wouldn't have because I'm here with my family. I'm getting married in two days. If I don't go through with this, my whole marriage is off. So I'm not trying to be too critical here. Like, I definitely think they're making steps in the right direction by having this. I just feel like we could do even better. I feel like the temple ceremony should not be this secret thing. I think that there really should be when you go through your temple prep class they tell you exactly what's going to happen so that you're not surprised when you get there but on the whole a good change and a change that i think was definitely made in part because of critics witness couples are continued this function is now performed by the actors in the film so in the past they had a man and a woman usually a husband and wife but not always that were the witness couple they would um show the things that we were going to do um, during the temple ceremony. They've done away with that. They now just show that on the screen during the movie with Adam and Eve. No physical contact is made between the officiator and patrons throughout the instruction. This is now reserved for the end of the ceremony. That I think is a very interesting change, but I've also heard that it's kind of been that way for a while now, just not officially. Because of COVID, they made changes where you weren't actually having physical contact with the officiator which was good, obviously, because we're not trying to spread germs here. And in the past, the temple ceremony was very hands-on. You were doing a lot of handshakes because there were secret handshakes that you learn and you do each of those with the officiator. And I also heard that they've done away with like all of the outfit changes and the standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down, which is another thing that I've heard a lot of ex-Mormons complain about. I myself have complained about that in all of the videos I've done about the temple ceremonies. Um, so they're not they're not doing that so much anymore and the, the handshakes that you perform You now only do it one time when the ceremony is over and you're going through the veil aka the curtain And I think that's a great change too not only because it helps prevent the spread of germs, but also because It's gonna save time. It's gonna be a lot easier for people to do the temple ceremony it's not gonna be quite so stressful because personally I had a lot of anxiety with all of the outfit changes and the standing up and down and the doing all the handshakes. I always felt like the old people, the um, temple workers that were around me would get frustrated with me if I wasn't doing things quickly and efficiently enough. I always felt like I was the slowest person in the room. Um, so, you know, thinking about the Mormons who are young people going through the temple for the first time and not having to worry so much about like, oh, stand up, sit down. Okay, change your robe from this side to the other, change your tie from this side to the other, put the apron on, take the shoes off, you know, all of these things. I, I feel happy for new Mormons going into it that they are not going to have to suffer that stress every single time they go. I also heard there were a few other small changes like 
um, of course, including Jesus more and showing pictures of Jesus more. I heard they're depicting the war in heaven um, that I talked about in this video with my husband. Um, in the plan of salvation, basically, there was like a war in heaven. Um, and then Jesus and Satan both present a plan. I heard that in the new ceremony, they actually like portray that more. I don't think they actually show the war, but they talk about, or they at least have dialogue between Jesus, Satan, and God um, about that. So there's definitely some interesting changes. Some of them are not so important, but the one that I think is the most interesting and the most important is that they are trying to be better about having informed consent. And like I said, I think this is a step in the positive direction. I think that they are trying to be better. I think that they are hearing what critics have to say. I think, I genuinely believe that they have people who watch videos like this, who work for the church, people who go and see what people are saying about them and try to change things within the church to make it either more palatable or better in general, not just because they want to appear better, because but because they actually do want the church to be a safer, better, more inclusive place. That was another thing I heard, that in the temple ceremony videos, there is more diversity. I'm not 100% sure, obviously I haven't seen the video, but from people that have gone, seen it, and have reported back, there is apparently more diversity, so that's good. And like I've said, I think the church does see what critics are saying. I think they hear those criticisms and I think that they try to change things based on that. And you can see that clearly through church history. Black people were not allowed in the temple until 1978 because people were criticizing the church so much. If enough people complain about things, they will cave to the pressure. And what does that say exactly about how true the church is if they are so willing to bend with social pressure, with government pressure, with what's going on in the world? I don't know. You think about it and tell me. But either way, I am very pleased to see positive change within the church. Although I'm no longer a Mormon and I never will be again, I have family members who are, who I care about very deeply, who I think are very good people and who I want the absolute best for. And if changes are made within the church to make the church a safer, healthier, happier place, I'm happy about that on behalf of my Mormon family members and any other Mormon who makes the choice to be baptized and be a member of the church. I just think people deserve informed consent. I think they deserve to feel safe and happy. And so if the church continues to make good changes, I'm happy with that. The reality is, and I know there are many people who want the church to just disappear, who want the church to no longer exist. You can want that, but it's not realistic. Truly the best that we can hope for is that people will be informed, that they will do research on the church, that they will see it in its entirety, both its past, its history, the bad things that have happened, um, and decide for themselves, maybe I don't want to be a member of this church, but for the people who do, the people who stay, I think it's generally a good thing to see positive change in the church. When I've said things like that in the past, I've gotten comments from people like that say things like, well, if the church changes for the good, then the people will want to stay members. That's bad. We don't want people to be members of the church. And I hear where you're coming from. I really do. But like I said, the church is not going to disappear. It's not going anywhere. It's a multi, multi, multi billion dollar corporation. Um, it's not going to disappear overnight. It might not disappear in 300 years. And for the people who are currently members, the people who will be members, the children growing up in the church, I know what that was like and how damaging it was for me. And if it can be a healthier, happier place for them, I'm going to be happy about that. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on this. I'm very interested to hear what you have to say, but remember to be nice. A lot of this has been my opinion and I tried to be nice about it. So I hope you're nice about yours. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and a special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best. Extra special thank you to Craig Call, Doug Davis, Noble Monster Comics, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Co. for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. Huge shout out to today's patron of the day, Kent Frazier. Kent is an honorary Exmo and has been a patron for eight months. Thank you so much for your support, Kent. If you would like to support the channel and the work that goes into it, there are links to do so in the description below, as well as links to all my other social media if you want to see more content. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!